Hello, everybody, and welcome to today's session on uh, uh, presenting you a case study. And uh, I would like to introduce Jimmy and Patricia Green, and uh, they are out there really killing it with real estate. And they just started only a, a, how many years ago have you started with real estate? Three or four years ago. Yeah, three or four years. Yeah. So, you know, we're in 2021. So, you know, they started about 2017, 18. Um, but tell me a little bit about your life, what you were doing before real estate. Now, I understand you do real estate full time or, you know, this is your main business. But what was your life like before? Uh, for, me, for me, I was uh, in IT, a computer programmer. I've mm -hmm. done that since, I guess, Early, early 1990s, and that's the only thing I've done. And uh, so, yeah, so, you know, stuck in the office, you know, um, every day. And uh, Right. Uh, and I'm sure a lot of people can relate to that. And so yeah. what happened um, that you decided to get into real estate? What, what was that aha moment to say, you know, I need to start taking a serious look at this? Um, I think for us, um, we actually got into it by accident. My son, um, you know, he moved, he moved away. So there was a, a family situation, not to go into that story, but anyway, I needed to buy him a, get him a, a place to stay, him and his wife and his, and his kid. Um, so we did, we did that. And so it ended up being a, a little condo we, we ended up purchasing. And believe it or not, that was going to be cheaper than what I would pay for a dorm fee. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I never had any inkling at that point. But um, to make a long story short, um, you know, after he graduated, we, you know, it doubled in like three years, it doubled, you know, in value. So we took that, sold that, and then um, our first deal together, really, um, you know, we kind of, uh, we worked with you on it. And uh, I don't know if you remember that back in 17, 18, but that was the tax lien deal. That, oh, yes, uh, yes. Uh -huh. We, you know, we, we rolled the dice on it a little bit, but it paid off. And uh, from, from there, we just kind of took off. Great. So it was kind of a chance that you got into real estate and then you say, well, you know, you were surprised yeah. about the outcome and you said there is yeah. something to it, right? Um, and a lot of time it happens that way. It happened for me too. I was like, well, mm -hmm. I'm just going to do this side business to pay for college. I didn't want to have student loans. And, uh, and then all of a sudden it became the main thing. So yeah, right. definitely I can, I can relate to that. Mm -hmm. um, so, and what do you like about real estate? Obviously the money potential is great, you know, but what do you like about the business? Um, well, Patricia's a, a realtor anyway, uh -huh. um, but for me, as far as investing and an investor, I, I just love that we, you put in or you get out what you put in. So, right. uh, you know, for me, a lot of times I get up early, I get up at four o'clock and I'm, I'm looking over, you know, which list to pull uh, over or how the VA did the, the prior day or what, what we're going to focus her on. Um, but you kind of got to stay on top of it. And, um, um, it's, it's, it's not something I sit back, but I, I guess I, to answer your question, mm -hmm. we just control our own destiny. So, mm -hmm. um, and it's, 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 yeah, it's, um, it seems to be paying off for us. And one thing I love about it is that no deal is ever the same. It, right. it, there's right. always something different. They wake up every day to, um, with a transaction. You never know how mm -hmm. your day is going to end, but you learn so much from it. Right. And, yeah. Uh, even from the challenges, you learn. I would say it's, it's amazing how you get to put a deal together. You get to put this family together. Uh, one is trying to sell, and the other one is in look, looking for the property. And you get to be the middleman putting those deals together. And at the end, it turned out to be a win-win situation. So it's uh, it's pretty rewarding. That alone. Right. No, definitely. Yeah. I that's what I like about it. Right? It's never the same, like you said, and. Uh, it really challenges you, makes you mind thinking. And I think that people that really have a passion about real estate, honestly, like my a real estate broker that really was an inspiration to me, she passed away at 98. And uh, mm -hmm. that last deal was three weeks before she passed away. 
Um, the other broker that also was an inspiration to me, she's 91 years old and she's still very active in the field. So it's, it's the people that have seen that do this with passion, they really have this, uh, you know, it becomes almost a lifestyle, right? You, right. like you say, you get up at four o'clock in the morning and you can't wait to really get out there and look for deals or like the one deal that I would like you to discuss here in a minute that you came across and made uh, you know over thirty thousand dollar profit on it. So it just becomes part of what you are, and you know it's like me. I I can drive to the grocery store and I look at houses. You know, it's just something that yeah. is second nature. Yeah, I, I always take a different route to wherever right. I go, and then yeah, a longer route. <laughs> Okay, so um, I know we started working together about three or four years ago, and like you, you know, you reminded me about that first deal, the tax lien that you did on mm -hmm. a condo where you made uh, double your money, basically. Um, but nowadays, fast forward into today, mm -hmm. um, what are you working on right now? What are you doing? Are you doing rentals, wholesaling, a little bit of both? Are you doing any fix and flips? What are you working on right now? How is your real estate world looking like? We're, we're kind of whatever the deal fits. Uh, we're, we're actually trying to still focus on rentals. Mm -hmm. uh, but what we, we've um, here lately, we've been wholesaling a few off and, and selling a few off. Um, so whatever the deal fits, um, you know, the, the last the property I think you just mentioned, we we um, we went into that one to. Um, to just do a lease option. So we love, you know, buy it and do a lease option. I knew I had enough equity in it to, to refinance out. And mm -hmm. so basically have a free house and cash flow. And then uh, investors started contacting me without me doing anything. And then, uh, you know, $30,000 profits. And so I, I you know, um, we end up making more than that, but, um, but it's whatever the deal is. Our, our primary focus is rentals. But um, we, you know, I guess we're hotel on this one. You know, we're, you know, we, we're doing more wholesaling than we have in the past. Um, right. And I always say that you have to have a main strategy, right? So mm -hmm. yours is buy and hold. And I knew that, you know, when from way back when uh, you contacted me, but you're not adverse to wholesaling. So, you know, that's your side strategy. Like you said, you went into this particular deal and then you ended up making over $30,000 profit by wholesaling it, even if originally you want to make a lease on it or buy and hold. Do you want to talk a little more about that particular example? You know, because it was really interesting. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I was on Facebook and I saw you say, hey, I'm driving today, I'm driving around. And then next thing I know, you know, you're selling it. So, you know, it was really fast that you processed that. But uh, do you want to talk about a little bit how you came across that property and, mm -hmm. uh, you know, a little bit of the phase of doing that particular deal? Yeah, um, that's that's actually a virtual market for us, uh, semi-virtual. Um, okay. It's in Kentucky, so we do make some trips there. And um, I think it was Christmas, we was driving around. Mm -hmm. I think we got 500 properties mm -hmm. that weekend. Mm -hmm. And so it was one of the properties that, that we was that we hit, you know, using deal machine, driving for dollars. Mm -hmm. And um, um, I don't know why we, did, why we didn't hit it immediately, I think, mm -hmm. but it's at some point that the VA uh, made contact and um, uh, passed it along and we, Let's see, I think it came through a text. I think, yeah. The first contact was yeah. text. We had a text. So it came through a text. And, uh, you know, I always try to let the seller uh, give the first price. And that's really difficult at times. But, um, and, and I held true on this one. And he gave a price uh, of $95,000. And I knew, um, and, you know, from talking to him, that it was in really good shape. And I, so I knew exactly what property value I knew that street really well and um, so I actually tried to get it a little lower uh, for cash I tried to get it I think for 85 cash and then um, I told him I could get, go creative on him a little bit so he I think he owed sixty thousand dollars mm -hmm. and I told him you know we could take over his mortgage and just basically go subject to and he considered it but in the end we settled on ninety five thousand and um, he wanted to wait Oh, that's what it was. 
he wanted to wait two months before he closed. That's why it took, that's, that's why the, the, the gap between Christmas. So he wanted to close on March 15th. And this was back in January. So we, we, we um, you know, we did that. I, I went in, I think, to, to close on March 15th, I think. And, um, you know, once I closed, other investors, I don't know if they see me there or what, they started approaching me to, to buy the property. And so the, the amount of money they was willing to give me, you know, I was going to come out $30,000 ahead. And so, you know, I, I just, I think you see my Facebook. I just put, hey, we're driving around um, Lexington, just, you know, just bought this property. We're unsure what to do with it at this point. And somebody that I used to work with 20 years ago seen it. And uh, she, she had a need uh, for her granddaughter. And she said, I, I want to buy that property. And I said, well, here's here's my offer. You know, my highest offer is 128.5. And she said, I'll give you 130. And okay, we'll take it. And uh, so we're we're actually closing on that here in a week or two. And so we'll we'll gross minus the closing costs, probably 30, 33,500. So. Okay. So I want to highlight some golden nuggets from what you presented here. Um, mm -hmm. So number one, you said, you know, driving, right? Driving for yes. dollars, getting out there in the field and driving around looking at properties and being very proactive. You mm -hmm. said, you know, you came up with 500 properties over a weekend, basically. Uh, you use a tool to help you. You use deal machine. Driving for dollar, uh, deal machine. Yeah, yeah, deal machine. Uh, which, by the way, for everybody now, Deal Machine came up with an app at the end of December where you can do virtual driving for dollars now with Deal Machine. Mm -hmm. um, so they have a Google extension that you can basically uh, tie Deal Machine with uh, Google Maps and you know Google Earth and driving for dollars. So that's pretty cool. Um, so then you went out there and. Um, and you basically documented really your journey because you said, you know, you use Facebook, you use an right. online platform to say, to get the interest. Hey, I'm out here. I'm driving for dollars today. I'm looking at properties. And then when you came across the property, you put it under contact. Now you, you talk with the seller, right? And the other thing you said, you did it via text. And that's yeah. one of the things we personally found out too. So another golden nugget here that a lot of most of, I would say 90% of our deals right now come from text. We start a conversation okay. back and forth via text and then we get on a phone call later. Um, okay. So yeah, so I'm sure you're finding that too. So it seems that people are more comfortable doing it that way. And mm -hmm. uh, so texting is actually the number one lead generation now as far as you know, more than calling. Um, then when you uh, came across, you talked to the owner, found out what he wanted and you became a little creative. You said a number of things there. You know, it's like when you come across a deal, like Patricia said, not every deal is the same, but you know, mm -hmm. and that's the beauty of it because you say, okay, when you have a willing seller and you obviously you are a willing buyer, okay, what can we do here, you know, to make it a win-win situation? So, you know, the creativity is very important. So don't feel like every deal has to be with this cookie cutter approach, right? So you became creative. So that's a your golden nugget. The other thing you said was about how you actually sold the property, right? Is uh, you went out there and uh, you basically shared it on social media. You say, hey, I have a deal and, uh, and start, you know, without even really being salesy about it right because you didn't know if you were going to sell it anyway and then somebody contacted you so what here tells us is that nowadays the world looks at it and say they want to see people like you that are out mm -hmm. there really sharing their story or their journey as real estate investors and in the process you people uh, grab your attention you grab their attention so right. there's a lot of good uh golden nuggets here from the story that you shared okay any else you want to add to it uh just just what you just mentioned just by doing that another reason we did that is just to let everybody know what, what we're doing and mm -hmm. you would not believe the people that's contacted me uh, because we do two markets we do kentucky and we do central florida and right. so so there's a lot of people that I know in Kentucky that, that are moving to Florida. And so I have since probably four or five people have contacted me. Hey, we're 
we're, we're looking for this or, or we're going to be selling one lady off that video. Um, she promised me she would, you know, sell us the property. She said, we're not quite there yet, but we're a couple months out. So, uh, you know, we just try to make herself uh, as visible, let everybody know what we what we do. And um, right. And there's one other thing I always tell people, you know, don't be shy about telling people you are in real estate. You know, you'll be surprised how many things happen just almost by serendipity because they know you're in real estate, you know, so people right. are going to approach you for different things. So that's a, the number one rule, definitely. Now, um, so this one was now your whole portfolio. How many, pro, how many rentals do you want to share? How many rentals roughly do you have right now? We, we've been selling a few off. I think we're at nine right now okay nine and i also knew that you had an interesting strategy a couple of years ago about you know getting these rentals you know we talked about that uh, um going for absentee owners especially mm -hmm. if they own multi-family more than you know two family or four family they tend to be more motivated than single family right so you had an interesting strategy where you were actually targeted market and then you were basically calling them. You want to talk a little bit about that? Yeah, our, our, um, our, our first duplex we got, our, we, that, that's how we got it. You know, I targeted, you know, this is what I want to buy. So I think at that point, I don't, I don't think I had a VA and uh, no, not that point. Yeah. So I just, you know, I ran a list actually mm -hmm. at that point of all the duplex plexus i think in polk county or maybe it's winter winter haven or, or lakeland florida and uh from from that list um you know we did multiple hits and and uh we got a, a good property out of it and uh it's you know we're holding on to it and uh that's it's, it's worked for us so it, it and we i guess we we do that a lot like if whatever we're we're starting to look for we can mm -hmm. market that way and then um you know, we're, we're, we're flexible. We're running different lists right now and stuff, but right now the, by far the, you know, three times as good as the driving for dollars, no matter what list I run, um, mm -hmm. the driving for dollars just beats everything. And right. Um, right. But, we're, we're, but we're actually going to start looking for more, more to units now, you know, mobile home parks, small mobile home parks and um, that kind of stuff. So we're going to start marked in that direction very soon. Right. And so you mentioned that you are getting lists and driving for dollars. So are those, uh, you know, are those your main ways to get properties right now? And when you mean by list, what, what type of lists are you getting? Yeah, we run, um, uh, we was doing a lot of pre foreclosures and uh, we, we've had, uh, we actually did a subject to deal with, mm -hmm. you know, off a of pre foreclosure list. Mm -hmm. And, um, but we do a lot of absentee vac. We stack list a little bit, so we do. It might be on the absentee, and maybe it's on the drive for dollars, and maybe it's on the tax default list. Mm -hmm. And so, if they show up on three or four lists, you know, uh, we, we think we get more, you know, bang for a buck on that. So, right. um, we, yeah, we do a lot of that. Yeah, cross uh, crisscross director. One of the things I like to do is, uh, for example, pull properties that are going mm -hmm. up for auctions for taxes. And then uh, I use this app called Route for me. And then yes. plug in yeah. the addresses in the app and then do for driving for dollars while I'm also looking at the tax delinquent property. And you know, and a lot of time when you come across the tax delinquent, that also looks very distressed and is mm -hmm. on my driving for dollars. So it's kind of works together. So yeah, definitely, right? Yeah, yeah. And I remember us using, I think you pointed us that direction too. Right. Yeah. So great. Um, so now let's talk a little bit about, you know, going back and now you're doing so well and, uh, you know, the, you have a very well-rounded business, but what is one of your biggest mistake uh, that you did just starting out and what did you learn from it? Um, biggest mistake. What do you think? Um, uh, we, we had a couple of ones that could have been a huge mistake, but we were blessed that it was turned around. And mm -hmm. one of them is the, we can never forget that our first deal, which was the one that tons of liens on it. 
And um, mm -hmm. so that one would, uh, to me, I was like, okay, let's just roll with it and um, and rent it out and mm -hmm. just collect the rent and just roll with the, with the liens on it. And I remember I was approaching you and you said, no, get, get yourself an attorney, uh, get those liens, work, work those liens out to get that, just have a peace of mind on it. Mm -hmm. And uh, we left that day, like we contacted an attorney and he was able to, um, to work with those. And it just, it could be more money that we could ever afford to pay. Mm -hmm. And uh, so it turned out. And then what, what we have with the, so the title? It was like 150000 dollars in liens and then so we got that knocked down to about eighty five hundred. Wow. So when we've done that and, mm -hmm. and cleared the title um uh, or we, we had and it still a special warranty but we went through uh Jenny um, mm -hmm. and she helped us clear the title um on that had it appraised so what six months later it's for about three me. times the value we bought it for thirty four thousand and we had it appraised for one twenty. So at that point we just refied it out. So we pulled out 85,000 now, bought three more properties, four, four doors out of that one deal. So mm -hmm. that's really the one that it could have went crazy. And, and <laughs> so you, know, you, you avoided kind of, a big mistake, right? Yeah. <laughs> yes. And it was one deal, our well, first deal yeah. that could have just set us off right here. And, right. Uh, so being surrounded, yeah. you know, people that knew what to do, mm -hmm. like, like um, so walked us through it. And they turned out to be a blessing. And from that right. property alone, we were able to acquire more properties because of the amount of equity that we had in it. Mm -hmm. Right. So Great. It yeah. Turned out to good. Good yeah. things happened from that. Yeah, that's the thing. You know, there's a lot of times investors get burned, right? People that start in real estate, you don't know what you don't know. And uh, you could have stumbled into that in the wrong way and then scared right. yourself out of the business. Um, and or say, you know, this is not for me, or you know. Mm -hmm burnt before you even got there and but doing that in a correct way and like you said having the people you know you talked to me and i went to the attorney and you got that in a way that actually was very favorable so you turn mm -hmm. the thing around that could have really been hurtful exactly. yes great yeah. so what are you most proud of at this point you know with everything you've done so far i would say persistency Mm -hmm. We were able to jump some hoops and uh, not give up. And right. there are, very, there are we, times that can be very challenging. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and it all goes back to, um, to us. It's like being surrounded by people that know what they have been uh, where we are mm -hmm. and uh, people that are where we want to be. So that is what keeps us going. And, right. uh, and we can always look and, like, okay, uh, it, it is doable, but not mm -hmm. alone. You know, it's uh, you can go, right. you can go further with um, being surrounded with the, the people that that know what they're doing. So it's um, so yeah, we are proud of really, being able to uh, uh, spot that from the beginning, right? And knowing that alone we could not have gone near as far we we had. And yeah. the equity, the equity alone, you know, I cannot believe in, um, the equity. How much equity has grown out of nothing? I mean, really, we started with nothing. And just okay. um, my equity is the equity we have is well more than me working 25 years in IT right. and what I got in my 401k. So just in three years, it's sur surpassed okay. that. So I'm not, um, that's my, I, I guess we're proud of that. You know, uh, if, yeah. we, if we never buy another house, you know, that's, that goes a long way with the equity we got. But. That means a lot, right, to be in a position where you can say that in three or four years, you were able to build up equity that surpasses what you did 25 years in a, in a good business, right, in a great business, right. in a 401k, it, it means a lot. And the thing is, it's like, just imagine what you can do in another three or four years, right? right. <laughs> you, you will double or triple that, especially with real estate, the way it's going right now is uh, you are just sitting on a gold mine. So yeah. it's, um, yeah, definitely a lot of people, you know, don't realize that how once you get going with the persistence, yeah. like Patricia so, said, things can exponentially grow pretty quickly, right? It, it is. It's, mm -hmm. it's crazy. I, it just, I was not expecting it that quick. Right. Um, now, what do you wish you, you, would, you would know 
um, at the beginning that you know now that you could have done a little different? That's easy. <laughs> I wish I'd listened to you a little more on the wholesaling. <laughs> well, because now um, um, we started, we, we, we didn't embrace it as much early because, you know, I was stubborn. I was wanting to do the, the you know, the rentals and, and that worked. That works to a point, but you know, at some point, you, you need the wholesale deals to to get into the other deals. Mm -hmm. And so, what I started finding out late last year, uh, as we started doing more wholesale deals, was yeah, this this thing can really fund mm -hmm. um, fund these other deals. And that's that's exactly what we do. We just take your money that we get from wholesale now, and we plow it back in. And um, so that's the mm -hmm. that's my regret and. and and I remember having a discussion after discussion with you, you know, and, and we were kind of stubborn. yeah, I was a little stubborn, you know, but uh, that's, that's the one thing I think I should Right. I find early. out that a lot of the students I talk to that have their mindset in buy and hold have a hard time wrapping their mind around wholesaling or even for yeah. fix and flip for the matter. I have one student, she has been very successful fix and flip, but she can't wholesale. She doesn't want to see she gets uh, her mind, she started getting her mind wrapped around things and she won't move, but she can fix and flip all day long. Uh -huh. So it, it's interesting, it's interesting. That's why a lot of time I say wholesaling is better to start with that because then mm -hmm. it's easier to transition into buy and hold and fix and flip. Right. But it's not easy to transition from buy and hold into wholesaling. And I know from personal experience, because honestly, I started like you guys, I started buying holding and because I didn't know about wholesaling and I stumbled into wholesaling later on. And then I realized like what happened with you is that the properties I was coming across that I didn't particularly want, sometimes I could make more money just by letting them go and pocket the money with a wholesale. So, you know, it, it served both ways. But to me, it was a very easier transition just because I think I really didn't know much about wholesaling. It was not really talked about so it was easier to even get into wholesaling you know almost 30 years ago but i can see that being harder now to transition into wholesaling if you're really set on another strategy yeah but um, it, just, it just opens up so many doors once once you get to that point and you're like oh i want to you know i need thirty thousand to get into this i will wholesale right. a couple of deals right and you get a free you basically got in this deal for nothing so Right. I mean, I call, that's why I call it the ATM machine, right? Yes. Yes. Yeah. So, <laughs> you know, it's like when you need to liquidate your money over the years. I've always done wholesaling. You know, there would be months where I would wholesale more than anything, but then I would have the liquidity to do buy and hold and fix and flips, you know, and, and go to buy at auctions. So that's what wholesaling was for me is, uh, you know, being a cash machine. Yes. Um, Okay, so share a little bit about some of the tools that you particularly care for. I know you, we mentioned some uh, deal machine and you pull in list. So if you want to mention some of the resources that you really like, and also um, if you have any, read any books lately, either about real estate or anything else for that matter, um, that you really would like to recommend. Um, I'll let Patricia handle the books because I'm not a reader. Uh, <laughs> I am. <laughs> yeah, okay. But, but for tools, I guess. Um, yeah, I, I'm a. I, I think I'm falling into that integrator status because I'm I'm the IT nerd, but uh -huh. I love systems and. Uh, right. So we use um, Deal Machine, uh, mm -hmm. and I'm evaluating that. Um, we're about to upgrade that plan. We use uh, Batch Leads. Uh, mm -hmm. which stores all of our, you know, we got like a hundred thousand records properties in our database now. So, and we do all, you know, that we do our um, stacking mm -hmm. and we generate out of that. And we also do our texting platform out of there. All of our skip tracing comes out of there. And what's cool about it, uh, we just switched back in January uh, from Mojo over to Batch Dialer. Mm -hmm. And uh, so they're pretty new back in December, but they're pretty solid now. And so what's cool about it is we can take everything out of leads and just push a button and it pushes it over to dollar. Right. So we're, we're we, we just lost one VA. Uh, so we're down to one right now. We don't have anybody uh, texting for us mm -hmm. at the moment. Um, but, um, but we have a full-time uh, VA that does, you know, uh, does cold calling 
Mm -hmm. And so um, I guess I do a little bit different and we're, we're, we're experimenting all the time. So we just mm -hmm. for cause purposes, we'll let her cold call and then I'll take, I'll take her um, non, no connects, busies, all of that and, and export that and back in to the texting, mm -hmm. which is batch dollar and then text out of that. But those, that's, our, that's mm -hmm. our three mains, the drop, the deal machine, uh, we use Podio uh, for CRM. Mm -hmm. um, that's basically it, uh, I think. Uh, we use we, List Source. Uh, oh, you use List Source to get your lists? Uh, we, we use we use it a little bit. Uh, we use Batch for most of our lists now, uh, Batch leads, but we we still do List Source a little bit. Right. Okay. Uh, do you use uh, for upstream at all? No, Patricia is a realtor. So, oh, that's right. Yes. Okay. So I'm all over RPR, you know, and all of that. And right. Okay, great. So yeah, you so in a way, you know, which is uh, I always recommend you keep it simple, right? You don't mm -hmm. because a lot of times I see people getting lost in too many apps, in too many right. things, and it's like they're not really doing the business, they're trying to figure all these things out. And the thing is, you know, do a system that works. We do the same thing. We have a pretty streamlined system. Mm -hmm. So you don't need this huge operation to do a lot of deals. You know, we're mainly wholesaling at this point. And uh, I still buy some rentals, but I'm pacing more with the rentals. I buy rentals that have great appreciation potential because my goal is in the next five to 10 years to really sell pretty much everything, you know, doing a 1031 exchange. So, mm -hmm. you know, I'm very selective. But the thing is, you know, you need a streamlined process. And even with us wholesaling as much as we do, we don't have to be crazy about it. You know, we do pretty much, and we rely heavily on uh, VAs and tools and other mm -hmm. people doing the work. I'm, I'm glad to pay somebody to take off a load. You know, if I pay somebody $2,000 a month uh, to right. really get me at least one to two deals a month, you know, which is 10 times what I spend, I'm glad for, I'm, Totally for Absolutely. it, right? Yes. Yeah. So that's what we're doing. We're keeping our marketing cost anywhere from 10 to 15% of our profits. So if our profits, you know, is a hundred thousand, we spend 10 to 15,000 in marketing, you know, on mm -hmm. a monthly basis. So um, great. Um, now, what, uh, and uh, Patricia, some books, something, or <laughs> even podcasts or anything that you really think that people should read or listen to? Um, one of my favorites, Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. Mm -hmm. That's my go-to because it just, it brings me back that kind of to refresh. And it's a very yeah. kind of, help me see it through a different perspective. And uh, right. like somebody else, it's, in the, it's a book that talks about like giving. And mm -hmm. uh, so it does, it does, does do me well to read every now and again and go back to it. And uh, the one that I'm reading right now, it has nothing to do with real estate, which is um, a fast, Feast and repeat. Oh, okay. So it's uh, it's it's an amazing book that it's uh, uh it just it talks a lot about the fasting part of it, intermediate fasting, and mm -hmm. it's it's fascinating how because I, I love to eat, and yeah. uh, so that's the one thing that I see. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm like, if I can if keep the weight, lose the weight without having to give up mm -hmm. things that I like to eat. So this is an amazing book. Okay, I love so to. I have it I have it in the uh, on audio, uh -huh. uh, audio book. So. Every day, I just kind of listen to about a, a 20 minutes to a half an hour, you know, that will keep me back on track. Okay. Oh, I'd like to check that out then. Um, so, and uh, last thing I want to ask you is uh, uh, three best tips of advice for somebody who wants to succeed in real estate. You know, somebody's uh, listening to you or watching. We have this in video and also in audio. Um what are three pieces of advice you want to say to somebody starting out? Definitely don't go it alone. If you're starting out, you, you, you know, you, you need to team up. You need um, mentorship, coaching, mm -hmm. um, training to join. I'm giving you more, aren't I? <laughs> um, uh, definitely uh, join your local RIA. Um, those, those connections there are a, a ton. And uh, we, we we made many good friends and uh, through that. Mm -hmm. uh, anything else? Uh, 
surround yourself. I would say like uh, um, things that did, does help us a lot. It was like Jimmy said, the education and mentorship, because uh, we do need someone that is, it's, there's always like, like we mentioned before, uh, real estate, there's always something new coming up. The marketing is always changing. And uh, no matter if it's a beginner or advanced, you always need to crack that shell. And it's easier when you have somebody that can walk you through it, guide you through it, and have been have made the mistakes that you are about to. And so it does help a lot. And uh, and I would say we try to stick with the um, one other thing is that uh, we surround ourselves with people that are where we want to be, but mm -hmm. also the real people, real people that have been where we are, mm -hmm. and uh, have gone to the same same uh, situation that we have been personally. So it's, it's nice to be surrounded with people that um, we can learn from. So we can get to a point that we can help people also get somewhere. And, and, that's, that's, and that's what we feel about real estate. It's uh, we're in the business of helping people. And uh, there's one phrase that I like a lot that it says, um, help people get what they want. Mm -hmm. And you get, help people get what they need and you get what you want. And it speaks so much to my heart because it, it, that's why it, it, real estate is not um, easy, but it's simple. And it's, it all comes down to who you are surrounded with. It, 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 because mm -hmm. if you feel discouraged, you have people to lift you up. If you see someone right. discouraged, you can be the one lifting them up that day. So it's, uh, it's an ongoing, uh, endless right. opportunity, but it's, mm -hmm. it's better to be part of it. So yeah, I think you, that kind of help us a lot yeah you are kind you're fortunate right because you have each other right so mm -hmm. is a, you have a support system in house uh but a lot of people out there they're on their own especially like you said you have the right people around you a lot of people you know might not have a supporting spouse or family or anybody so to be to find your community of people that are really going through the journey with you and they've been there and they believe uh, that it can be done and they empower each other that can make a difference between really giving up and making it through the business. Because like you said, you know, is, uh, it's not easy, but it's simple, right? Mm -hmm. So it's, it's very interesting. I like that quote. And, and like Tony Robbins say, one of the quotes that Tony Robbins said, you know, just find somebody who has achieved the results that you want mm -hmm. and just basically follow them. You know, it's like, even with me, I always hire coaches for marketing. I always look out there. If you, if you have found a new way of marketing that is working, I'm going to just pay you to run my marketing. As simple as that, you know, even real estate, I talked to somebody and he's doing something great. And I was like, you know what? I hire you and your team. I don't care. I pay you guys because the thing is, why do I have to reinvent the wheel and going through trials and errors when I can just follow somebody else who is already working on a pavement. It's going to save me a lot of time and money and make more profits. There is what I call an opportunity cost in, you know, in any business where the money that you don't make while you're trying to figure things out and make the mistakes. You know, that's an opportunity cost that you miss the opportunity, right? So it's, uh, it's very important to understand that. So yeah, that's great advice. And, uh, you know, I am always following you and see how, how you're going next. And like I said, you know, I love to work with you guys because I say when you get to a certain level, especially as you are, um, you're going to find that a lot of people really don't want to share you know, right. their um, secrets, as they say, you know, mm -hmm. so it's, it takes a special person. Like people say to me all the time, why do you share so much? Why do you go out, go out there? Well, first of all, like you, Patricia, I believe in uh, giving, right? Paying it forward. And the, and the thing is, he said, if anything happened to me today, tomorrow, you know, my knowledge is going to go with me, right? To have been able to empower you and other people with the knowledge and the skills, and you're going to pay for it to somebody else with the knowledge and the skills, this is how it's supposed to work. And so you definitely got the key to that. So I'm very glad that we got to meet and connect and, uh, you know, stay connected through the years. And we're going to be working on great things together, I'm sure. Yeah, appreciate okay. everything you brought to us because it, it's sure open doors that we would have never seen.
Great, thank you. Thanks for taking this time today. And uh, for everybody, like I say, make sure you follow Jimmy and Patricia. They're doing great, amazing things. And we're gonna invite them more to speak and uh, present for everybody and teach some of their uh, way of doing things. And like I said, this is a business where every deal is different. So I'm always asking, how do you do that deal? How do you come across this? How did you market? Because there is always a lot to learn from what other people are doing. So that's definitely great that for you to share. So thanks again, everybody, and uh, uh, for listening. And uh, uh, I'll talk to you soon. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for having us.